Good morning everyone. Today I'm going to be doing the basic guide to jetty fishing. Hopefully throughout today I'll be able to teach you guys a few tips and tricks and maybe even get you onto your first fish. So first thing you have to do is choose a pier. Choosing the right pier is very important because certain piers will hold more fish than others. So the one I've chosen today has many key features which do produce a lot of fish. So the first thing about this pier is that it stretches out a fair way. It is a fairly long pier, so that allows us to cover multiple different depths. We can fish the shallows for the shallow water species, and we can also fish the deeper water if we want to. This pier also has a lot of structure. Obviously, there's a lot of pylons, but there's also some really nice weed beds and sand patches. There's also a few shopping trolleys off the end, so it has a little bit of reefy structure as well. So there's many different environments where fish can hide, and that's why this pier is great for multi-species. You can catch so many different species here, squid, whiting, snapper at certain times of year, and anything, anything swims through this channel. We've got the main channel directly opposite the pier, so there's some ultra deep water, and that means you can catch anything off here. Now, the pier that I'm fishing today is on Phillip Island, and if you want more knowledge about all the local piers around here, check out the Patreon. I have a little write-up really in depth about how to fish all the local piers and how I'm fishing this one today. So with that out of the way, let's get onto the pier and run over the first things which we're gonna do. So we do have a few fishermen over to the left here and I think one of the best things you can do when you're going to a new pier is talk to the locals. See if they're catching anything, if there's anything around. And it usually gives you a good sense of what's biting. How you going? How you going? Getting a couple? Hey. Getting a couple? One, yeah. You're chasing squid. Yeah, squid. Yeah. How are you going? You getting a couple? Nah, nothing. Yet. Nah, nothing yet. What are you chasing? Uh, whiting. Whiting, yeah. Uh, squid float out. You got a float, yeah. Yeah. Oh well, good luck. Yeah, same to you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start down here. Well, we've just had our chat to a few of the local people, and I always like to do that when I first rock up to a pier. It just gives you a good idea of what's biting, what's around, and also what's in season. A lot of the fish around here are seasonal, so by talking to the locals, you can find out what you probably should be targeting. So those anglers up there are targeting squid and whiting. So I think we might give that a go, and that was actually my plan coming into today as well. So because today is for beginners, I've only brought down the very, very bare essentials and basics. I've got a bag full of stuff here, which has some bait, some lures, and some sinkers and some rigs. So that's got everything which we need. And I've also brought down two fishing combos and rods. They're very, very basic. This is just a medium setup with 10 pound line, 20 pound leader, and a three to five kilo rod. And I've also got another rod, which is gonna be a float rod for a squid. So that's all I've got with me today. And we'll just have a quick little deep dive into our bag and see what we're gonna use first of all. It's possibly a bag that I pinched off mum, but today it's got our fishing tackle in it. So we've got one tray here, which is full of lures, squid jigs, and sinkers. So everything which I'll need has all the basics. So squid jigs, perfect for targeting the squid around here. We've got some lures, which can target the pike and the snook around the jetties, some soft plastics, and also some sinkers for chasing whiting. So very, very basic stuff in this container. And that's almost it. We do have a couple of pre-tied rigs. So obviously we're keeping it very basic. So we've got a pre-tied whiting rig. We've got a couple of those. We have some squid for bait, which is in this little plastic bag here. And then we obviously have a knife and pliers. So we're only using the bare essentials today. All of the basics are right here. And this is everything which I'm gonna be using. So we've got a fair few options on what we could do at this jetty. We could fish for some smaller fish with some bait. But first of all, I'm gonna chase some squid. There's a fair few other people doing the same thing. So there could be a few around. I've tied on this little green and white jig here. And this is what we're gonna give a go first of all. So if you're at a pier where there's a lot of weed beds, which are in that two to three, four meter range, there could be squid in the area. So definitely give it a go, tie on a jig and give it a crack. That's what we're gonna do now and see if there's any around. Uh, Plenty of seaweed there. <laughs> Got a squid jig. Thought I'd join you. <laughs> Typically squid are very aggressive, so if they are here, it shouldn't take long 
to get one. He might be onto a big one. Let's see what he's got. What did you get, Daryl? Oh, I tell you what, <laughs> I should have bought him and I couldn't. He got a lot of around the pole. Oh, he went around the pier. Stuck. Oh, really? I, I, I tried there and it kept on going up and down the pole. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought, look, if I go over there, and then I was the cord on there with the, the line. I'm trying to hook it off and, it, and I got it there. It was uh, tight again. <laughs> it came around. Oh. <laughs> Local knowledge like, at its best. No, yeah, well, well, like yeah. local knowledge, yeah. yeah you, Anybody else that, you know, So what are you using, a little paternostery? Yeah, yeah I'll, with some blue bait. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, bait, yeah, salmon, yeah. He's a good salmon, though. Yeah. There's your bait, <laughs> the little yeah, pilchard. Oh, yeah, oh, the, yeah, there's the bait. That's a good fish, though. That's the beauty about fishing piers. When you're not catching fish, there's always someone who is. Daryl's a local legend, he's got this place dialed and it seems that there are some Australian salmon about. We'll keep trying for our squid for another 10 or so minutes though. Alright, squid didn't work out for us so we've got to change up our methods I reckon. So the first plan did not go to plan at all. But honestly, it's not very surprising. We didn't get the timing quite right. We weren't here at the perfect time to chase squid. A lot of fishing is all about timing. So if I came here at night or really early this morning when there was a high tide change, I probably would have caught them. But I came here a bit later. It is now the middle of the run out tide. The sun's already up and we didn't catch anything. So it's not very surprising. You really have to time your trips around the peak bite times. So now what we're gonna do is switch it up to a little bit of bait fishing. Yet again, I'm expecting it to be tough. It is the middle of the day, middle of a tide, but either way, we're still gonna give it a crack. So I've got a very, very basic rig right here. This was actually pre-tied, so all I did was clip on this little sinker and it came with a little hook and a bead for an extra attractant. So I've cut up some fresh squid right here. This is gonna be the bait of choice. I'm just gonna thread this onto the hook now there's definitely a bit of an art to threading bait onto the hook. So we've just pinned it through the top there. You could leave it like that, but it might get pulled off fairly easily. So I like to go back through the bait a few times. So two and we'll do three. So we've pinned that back through three times. There's a fair bit of resistance. The hook's hidden a little bit more. And also it's a bit of an extra attractant. There's a dangly bit down the bottom. So it moves around in the current like a little worm and that gets the fish's attention. Now I'm using fresh squid as bait. So it's a fairly tough bait and it doesn't get pulled off the hook very easily. But if you're using blue bait, pilchard, a lot of those other really common baits, they're a lot softer. So you have to pay a lot of attention when you're looking at your line because as soon as you get a little bite, your bait could be gone. But I like to use squid because it's a tougher bait and it usually lasts a little bit longer than the others. All right, let's give it a go. Now ideally, we would be fishing on the other side of the pier because the tide's flowing out. And when you're fishing in a strong current, you always want to be fishing with the tide, especially if you're using bait. But we don't have that luxury at the moment. There's a lot of people fishing on the other side of the pier. So what I'm gonna do is start on this side. We might try over there in a little bit later, but for now, we'll fish over here. And I'm actually just gonna drop it right alongside the pylons and along the pier. Surprisingly, it's a really good area to catch fish. There's structure right nearby. There's a sand patch right here as well. So it's actually a really good area to catch fish. There's also a nice weed bed out there as well. So I might do a big cast oh, out towards that weed bed, but I just had a little bite straight away. So if you're looking to catch your first fish, you can't really beat doing this kind of stuff, keeping it very, very basic. I'm fishing right alongside a pier and I'm getting some bites for sure. So I'm just gonna bounce that along the bottom and keep active. I'm doing a couple of bounces then just letting the bait sit for about 10 seconds. I've caught a lot of wrasse, a lot of leather jackets, and obviously a lot of toadies doing this, but I've also caught some whiting as well. So you do get some good fish while doing this method, and it's definitely worth trying at a new pier. The structure is always gonna bring fish. So if you fish around the structure, you give yourself a really good shot. Oh, that's a better bite. That was a much better bite. Back again. Got him. We got something. Didn't take long, it's whiting. <laughs> how's that? We talked about how there's whiting along the pier and that is a perfect example. Man, 
Wasn't really expecting to get one, to be honest, but that is awesome. That's exactly what you can get underneath these piers. Like, you don't expect it, and a lot of people don't do it. But these whiting, they do sit along the piers. That was directly underneath, <laughs> and we got him. I actually figured it might have been one as well. The last hit I had was very, very whiting-like. And that's perfect. That's like one of the best fish you can catch off these piers. And we've got one right away. Definitely not a massive whiting, but still, the best eating fish in Western Port, you're not gonna complain with that. So we'll give him a measurement. The good thing about the piers is they have these measuring boards all along. So you can just measure your fish very easily, make sure they're legal. So King George whiting, the size limit is 27. So we go from his head, right on the bottom there, all the way up to the end of the tail, he is 32. So he's very easily legal. Because he's a King George, I'm gonna keep him for a feed, so. Really nice, really nice start. Okay, I'm actually gonna get a fresh bait on there. He's destroyed that one a fair bit. And sometimes they keep eating the fresh baits. So we'll put that on. Perfect little presented squid strip. I'm gonna get that right back down there. That's exactly where I caught him. So I'm gonna put it straight back down because whiting, are a they're a school fish. So there could be more in the area. There we go, got another one. Whiting, yes, there we go. <laughs> How cool is that? We got yet another King George Whiting. A little bit smaller, that one, but that's the second one. Okay, so his nose is on the front, zero, all the way down to 30. So that is yet another legal King George Whiting. Not very big, but they all taste really good. Just right along the base of this pier. Well, this is pretty much the perfect example of how it can be. You can get a really nice little feed just by doing the real basic stuff along the piers. We tried for squid, didn't get any of those, but we've found a nice little patch of King George. I think that might almost conclude our little session. We've been here for a couple of hours now. Caught a few nice fish. Not the ideal conditions today, but we still managed to catch a couple fish. So if you come here on the right conditions and do everything which we've talked about, you're most likely gonna get a feed of fish. All right, everyone, that is gonna conclude my basic guide to jetty fishing. So hopefully you guys learned something. And if you go out here and fish some of the piers yourselves, you have a little bit more of an idea. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on the video, comment your thoughts down below, and I'll see you in the next one.